This is the second part of the nomenclature of alkanes. The first thing is we need to find what is the longest hydrocarbon chain. In some cases, we will need to turn to find which one is the longest chain. This is not a three carbons long with an isopropyl alkane, but this one is a butane. We can rewrite the same molecule to see that it is the same no matter the orientation of those alkyl groups. So we have two methyl, three methyl. We can rewrite the substance one more time. This is the same molecule of two, three dimethyl butane. The second molecule to explore is this one. It's not five carbons long, it's not a pentane, it is a hexane. We rewrite the substance as a skeletal form, and that is a three methyl hexane. In both names, we have followed the IUPAC rule. The parent, but, because it's four carbons long, or hex, because it is six carbons long. The suffix, A-N-E, which is the family name, is an alkane, because it only has single bonds. Then the prefix, indicating what is the name of the substituent alkyl group. In this case, is a methyl alkyl group. In this case, is a methyl twice, so we have to use the multiplier dimethyl, and then the locant to indicate what is the position of that alkyl group substituent. In this case, we have two branches, two, three, we have two branches in those positions. Now we have four different constitutional or structural isomers for substituted pentane. In this case, we have substituents in carbons number two and three. In this one, we have substituents in carbon number two, and in this one, carbon two and four. They will have different name according to IUPAC. This name will be very simple. We have two methyl groups in positions number two and three. We use the multiplier di to indicate that is two of the same, two, three dimethyl pentane. In this one, both of the methyl groups are within the same position, but every time that we have a name, we will have as many numbers as branches. In the third structure, the methyl groups are in position number two and four. I can label this as one and two, but it makes no difference because this molecule is symmetric. And the last one is when we have both methyl groups within carbon number three. And the name of the compound is 3,3-dimethylpentane. Let's apply the same concept to a tri-substituted pentane. This is a pentane with three methyl groups. The methyl groups are in different positions in each case. When numbering the hydrocarbon chain, we need to make sure that these alkyl groups are taking the smallest possible number. We have a methyl group in position number two, three, and four, so we will need to use the multiplier trimethyl. The name of the substance is 2,3,4-trimethylpentane. The second one has two methyl groups on carbon two and one on carbon number three. The name is a 2,2,3-trimethylpentane. And the last one, we start numbering the hydrocarbon chain on this side to make sure that the alkyl substituents have the smallest possible numbers. It is a 2,3,3-trimethylpentane. This is a substituted obtain. It is eight carbons long with substituents in position number three. We need to make a decision of which one is carbon number one. If this is carbon number one, we find in carbon number three a methyl group. If this is carbon number one, carbon number three will hold an ethyl group. 
According to IUPAC, we will need to label carbon number one, the one that will give a smallest number to the alkyl group that comes first in the alphabetical order. The name of the molecule is 3-ethyl-6-methyl-octane, and the last one must be only one word. Let's find the longest hydrocarbon chain in this haloalkane. If we go in this direction, it is 6 carbons long. If we go in this direction, it is 9 carbons long. But if we go in this direction, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 carbons long. Therefore, this is a substituted decane. The next step is to make a decision on what will be carbon number one. We have two choices because they are at the same distance of a branch, but BR goes first in the ABC order. Our next step is to recognize what are the names of the alkyl substituents. And they are an isopropyl, in position number four and a methyl in carbon number nine. Now we need to place all of these substituents in alphabetical order. The substituents are a 2-bromo, 4-isopropyl and 9-methyl. The full name for the substance is a 2-bromo, 4-isopropyl, 9-methyl decane. Observe that the last alkyl substituent goes together with the longest parent hydrocarbon chain name followed for the A-N-E ending as the family name of an alkane. This is a substituted heptane. No matter in what direction we move, we will find a methyl group on position number three and an ethyl group on position number four. So we know the substituents are three and five, so we need to use the multiplier dimethyl and also a four ethyl. But when it comes to the name of the substance, we need to follow the alphabetical order. The full name of this substance is 4 ethyl 3 5 dimethyl heptane. Observe that the di is not being used as part of the alphabetical order. According to IUPAT, multipliers are not part of the ABC order when naming the prefixes of organic compounds. You need to be careful when selecting the longest hydrocarbon chain. It appears to be an octane with an isopropyl on position number three and ethyl on positions number four and five. I will show you that there is an octane in this molecule that contains four alkyl substituents. This route is much better choice as the longest hydrocarbon chain that instead of having one, two, and three alkyl substituent groups, now we'll have one, two, three, four alkyl groups. We have ethyl on positions number three, four, and five. We need to group them using the multiplier triethyl. We also have a methyl group on carbon number one, and that is then 3,4-trimethyl to methyl octane.